Hey guys, we have yet another video review for you. We've got a new cooler from Lee & Lee. This is the HydroShift version 2. It's a 360mm radiator cooler, but it's one of the ones that has a little screen on it. The screens on these coolers are not really practical, but neither is RGB. This has both, and I'm really excited to check it out. So inside the box you have a little manual. Nice packing material actually. All the accessories are packed in little boxes and you even have a little screwdriver. Oh, they're not using standard screws. This is a hex screw. You have a little QR code for the software download. Right, let's take everything out and then go through it. So we have accessories, and I like that they're labeled with the relevant sockets. So you have the Intel, AMD, and the general accessories. And here we've got the main cooler itself. As you can see, it already has the Lian Li fans pre-installed. So that's the standard Unify fans, which don't have any cables in between. So you have very limited amount of cabling here. And as you know, normally with RGB cables, as well as um, screens, you have a bunch of cables to deal with. In this example, you have this little adapter here, as well as a few cables over here. That's really impressive. When we first reviewed the Ryogen cooler from Asus, one of the things that really stood out to us is in the pictures, they basically photoshopped out all the cables. So it looked a bit like this. In this example, we actually do have not that many cables. What you see on the back here is they actually have a bit of a tube managing brackets, which are adjustable. So you can actually unscrew and move them back and forth. So for example, if you wanted to route it the other way, you could. And then we have the actual cooler itself. And it actually has controls from the wheel. So you can actually have it in one in the offline mode. You can actually control what you have on it. It's a bit more limited, but you can still do it. And now we see the fans themselves. This is not a big cooler. We've recently reviewed some other coolers, which were quite thick in terms of the radiator space as well. In this example, Lian and Li actually went the other way. As compared to the previous generation, they basically slimmed it down in almost every single direction by about two to five millimeters just to make it a bit more compact to fit in more cases. Uh, I think that's pretty cool and I'm curious to see what performance we get out of it. In terms of the specs, so the screen itself, and we'll plug it in and see how it works in a bit. The screen itself is 2.1 inches in diameter. It can support 480 by 480 pixels in resolution and it runs at 60 Hertz with 500 nits brightness. It's not too bright, but I think it's gonna be bright enough inside your case, unless you have all the RGB running everywhere, which will probably be interfering with it, but we'll see how that goes. This cooler comes in three different variants. So you can get without the fans, which runs you around $160, and then you can install your own fans if you already have them, or if you prefer another brand. You can buy them with more standard fans, which will run you around $180, and also you can run it with these faster fans, which are a little bit more loud, but run about 400 RPM faster. And that will set you back $240. So it's a significant premium, but I'm excited to see how they perform. So let me set up on our test bench and see how it does. All right, now that we've unboxed the cooler, let's talk about setting it up and what it's actually like to use. First off, the manual is incredibly thorough. It not only walks you through all the mounting options, Intel and AMD included, but also gives you clear guidance on what order to do things in. For example, they recommend attaching the mounting brackets to the motherboard before installing it inside the case. Seems obvious, but it's nice to have that level of detail, especially if you're going to be doing this for the first time. The cooler is also really easy to install. For our AMD test setup, it literally is a matter of placing the bracket, aligning the arrow towards the CPU, and screwing it in. Once the brackets are on, apply the thermal paste, peel off the protective film on the cold plate, and slide the cooler into place. There are also these handy little tabs that hold it steady in place, so you don't have to juggle the block while reaching for the screws. I really appreciate that. Now the cable management. This is where Lian Li Lee really flexed. The cooler comes with pre-installed fans that use their interlocking unifan design, so there are no messy cables between the fans. Everything is routed through each end, which makes the whole thing much cleaner than the average AO. 
And if you are into the ultra clean look, you can run the cooler in offline or wireless mode and ditch the USB cable entirely. Speaking of modes, let's go over them quickly. The offline mode is great for neat freaks. You're using the rotating wheel on a pump to switch between the display screens and lighting effects with no USB required, but there are also no advanced features. Wireless mode works with the L-Connect wireless controller, letting you configure screens and lighting effects via the software, again without the USB cable. And lastly, the streaming mode is where you get to plug in the USB and unlock the full potential of the screen. GIFs, MP4s, system stats, you name it. In terms of design, Lian Li has clearly learned a lot from Gen 1. This cooler is more compact and shorter by a few millimeters all around. It's easier to fit in tighter cases now, which I think is a great call. They've also done a fantastic job with tubing. The routing channels are built in into radiator design. You can even adjust them slightly by unscrewing and repositioning them to better suit your case designs. Now onto the software itself. Installation is easy, as everything else, but there are a few things to watch out for. Make sure that everything is plugged in properly or the software won't detect the cooler. Once connected, the L-Connect 3 gives you loads of options, from fan curves to RGB to screen customization. You can even link the cooler behavior to CPU or GPU temps. That said, I did notice a few hiccups when using the system under load. During our Prime 95 run, the software momentarily lost sync and the fan profiles reset. Not ideal and something to watch out for if you're running stress tests or heavy workloads. Visually, the screen looks great. You can choose static readouts of temps, create custom animations, or use it as a rotating display of various system stats. Personally, I prefer having all the info on one screen, but others might enjoy looped effect. It's really up to your taste. As for the wireless controller, it's a bit of a mixed bag. It works and it helps to clean up the build by removing at least one of the USB cables. But to be honest, I've built clean systems without it before and it's more of a nice to have and a must have. Also keep in mind that the dongle is quite large and may block some of the adjacent ports on your motherboard. And finally, I love that the cooler can hand off control to your motherboard if you want to. One quick toggle and you can let your BIOS or third party software take over, which is something I really appreciate. It gives you flexibility rather than lock you in into their ecosystem. Performance is where things get really interesting. Let's start with acoustics. The pump itself is whisper quiet, even at full speed it measured below our ambient noise floor of 35 dBA, which is kind of impressive. The fans on the other hand can ramp up if needed. At 100% speed, we recorded 51.1 dBA, which is on the louder end of the scale, but expected given the performance. To match our 40 dBA test environment, the fans had to be dialed down to around 1620 RPM, which is pretty solid operating point and still delivers a very respectable cooling. Now onto thermals. We ran our test on the Ryzen 9 7900 using high power profile, around 230 watt under load. In the 100% fan speed test, the HydroShift 2 delivered a temperature delta of 72 degrees, outperforming every other cooler in the lineup. To put that into context, even the best air coolers like the Quiet Dark Pro Elite and the PC cooler RZ620 were hovering around 74 to 75 degrees. So that slimmer radiator and quieter pump didn't really hold it back. When we noise normalized all coolers to 40 dBA, the Lian Li still did really well. But generally speaking, all coolers here were in and out of 95 degree TJ Maxx for the chip. And it's not just about the temps. Higher thermal efficiency means the CPU is allowed to pull more power and maintain higher clock speeds. While other coolers capped out at around 210 and 217 watts, the HydroShift 2 allowed Ryzen 9 to draw 235 watts on average, which is nearly the full power envelope. And that directly reflects in clock speeds. While the Rave Prism was holding back the CPU at just 4730 MHz, the HydroShift 2 pushed it all the way up to 4830, with only a few high-end tower coolers pulling ahead slightly. So the short version. It's louder at full tilt, but it cools better, allows for more power draw and boosts the average clock higher. It's pretty clear that the Lian Li isn't just chasing aesthetics here. Yes, the screen looks great, the cable management is impressively tidy, and the overall design is sleek and compact, but underneath all of that, it's generally a capable cooler. From a performance perspective, it holds its own. It outperformed several air coolers we tested, all while keeping noise levels in check. The noise normalized performance is especially impressive, delivering both on temperatures and the high CPU package power draw in our 40 dBA test. 
Of course, the price tag will raise eyebrows, especially for the high-end models with the faster fans. And I do think that the wireless controller, while clever, is a bit of a niche feature that not everyone will need. But as a whole package, the HydroShift 2 is well thought out, well executed and delivers where it matters, thermos, noise and user experience. If you are like me and you want an AIO that blends solid performance with clean look, plus an option to go full RGB on Fridays, this is one of the best all-round coolers that we've ever tested. Thanks for watching. If you think this cooler might be what you need, check out the link below for more details. As always, don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.